Welcome everybody to the 40 Finance Channel. My name is Jeff Beers. Today we're looking at Fiserv stock. Asking the question, is this stock a good buy in 2020? We're going to dig into what Fiserv does, how their stock's currently evaluated, and talk about the future for this company. As always, my stock picks and projections are my opinion only. Please get the advice of a professional before taking on any risks in the stock market. However, if you do enjoy going deep on stocks like Fiserv and talking about personal finance, investing ideas, and everything related to money, then please subscribe to the 40 Finance channel. Thank you very much to everyone who's subscribed so far. All right, Fiserv is a very interesting company and it's one that's drawn my attention because of my fascination with the, the sort of progression of digital payments, digital movement of money. As most of you know, I'm a big fan of Visa and PayPal, companies like that. But what Fiserv does uh, to some degree is work with some of the old school uh, banking partners, businesses like com community banks, savings and loans, People like that, they help them come more or less online to add digital services. Uh, there's also a back-end to Fiserv that gets into merchant acceptance and helping folks get approved online. It's a very big company, and I can tell you from doing my research, it's very hard to navigate uh, all the different channels that Fiserv serves in, um, but it's an interesting case study. And just looking really quickly at the sort of the three segments that they deal with, uh, you have merchant acceptance, financial technology, payments, and network. So this slide comes from their quarterly report and you can kind of get a breakdown of where they're making their money. You can see that it's spread pretty well across all three segments uh, and a healthy revenue stream across the board because this is just Q1 2020, you've got $3.4 billion uh, in revenue, not to mention some small growth in each of the segments, which is impressive when you think about how much money is actually coming in. So the biggest news for Fiserv over the past couple years has been their acquisition of First Data. And this is something that happened last year in 2019, right around uh, the July time period. And those companies have now had, you know, the better part of a year to sort of synergize and come together. So there's a lot of eyes on Fiserv right now in terms of does this first data acquisition pay off? How is everything going? And how that unfolds uh, in terms of profitability will say a lot about where Fiserv stock goes in the future. Here's a quick snapshot of the announcement that I pulled from payments.com. You can see, again, this is a 2019 um, article. So uh, we're, we're well past that time, but, uh, but the information is still correct. In the first green box with the transaction now complete, Fiserv is one of the largest payments and financial technology providers. And they go on to say, as a newly combined company, we will leverage our technology expertise, integrate our solutions to serve client needs in a ways that no one else can match. Focused on innovating to enable our clients to better serve their customers and end users so they can succeed in a rapidly changing world. So again, innovating to enable our clients. So at the end of the day, Fiserv kind of sits here in the middle, right? They are trying to help banking clients, I would say traditional banking clients, bringing them technology and other services so they can transform into this new digital world. At the bottom there in the second box, you can see the combined firms are primarily focused on their areas of synergy. This is with First Data particularly expanding technologies like point of sale lending, helping merchants get their money faster, and using data 
in terms of thinking about making better decisions around fraud and the like. All right, so let's take a look at Fiserv stock as of today to see where it stands. And right off the bat on the year to date chart, you can see that we're still down from the February highs. So unlike many technology stocks that have almost completely bounced back, Fiserv, whose companies are basically banks, is still struggling uh, to get back to their highs. This could be a good thing from an investing standpoint if you believe in Fiserv's uh, long-term profitability. I would argue that they're still kind of trading at least at a price discount uh, compared to what we saw in the February highs. 52-week range, $73 to $125. Current PE ratio of 54.29. And you see up above there, we got a forward PE that drops pretty significantly down to 22.12, $12 billion in revenue over the last 12 months. And interesting on cash and debt, this is a company with uh, you know just under a billion dollars in cash, but that first data acquisition still pretty heavy on the debt load at 22 billion. All right, now let's look at the valuation metrics over the past several quarters to get a feel for is Fiserv on sale now or is the price trending higher than we've recently seen? And here we've highlighted trailing PE in the first green box. You can see that in December, or excuse me, March of 2019, you had a trailing PE of 30 and a forward PE of 25. This starts to get into the first data acquisition uh, and having to pay for that. So as we trend down in 2019, get closer to the end of the year at 55, that is where the trailing PE starts to take a bump. Uh, forward PE though is kind of heading on its way down compared to the last several quarters with March being uh, the cheapest of, of course, that was the big market dip. Price to sales also coming down a little bit, so you see some synergies in there. And then price to book also at a reasonable level compared to where it has traded in the past year or so. All right, so let's take a look at the tip ranks dashboard to see what do the best performing analysts think of Fiserv over the next 12 months. And right now we got a median price target of $120. That's about 24% upside from where we stand today. You've got 13 buys and three holds and no sells on the rating. We got a high bar of 135 on a price target and we got a low of 90. So in general, Fiserv appears to have some upward trajectory. Now this company is really big, so you have to understand um, that the COVID impact compared to what you're seeing with bank stocks, you know, there's still some pain in the banking industry. And if there's pain in the banking industry, then that's ultimately going to hurt Fiserv. So I think the situation here is not necessarily a 24% upside in terms of growth. I think it's more like 24% upside as Fiserv has not completely bounced back uh, from the COVID pandemic yet. Now, in all my research of Fiserv, I found it pretty interesting that there's a couple sides of the coin uh, for this company. Again, this is a big ship, right? And um, it's definitely not gonna wake up tomorrow and triple its revenues. This is a ship where with the first data acquisition, you're looking to save money or have efficiencies in the cost of operation. And that could take a year or two, uh, if not longer, to fully realize. Then you also have that hefty debt load, 20 plus billion dollars. Now five serves in the right industry to manage that debt because anytime you're into digital payments, you're talking about you know high margin business, uh, you basically keep trucking along, adding new clients, adding new payment uh, opportunities, and eventually that will get paid off. But it's definitely worth noting. So on the bull side, I pulled uh, this article from Motley Fool. They have a crazy logo at the top left for some reason. I don't know uh, what was what's going on there, but. Uh, this was published on June 15th of 2020, 
And it goes on to say that once the dust settles, this fintech firm could emerge even more profitable. Talking about coming off of the lows uh, here in the pandemic. The company has ramped up its efforts at fully integrating first data and it's upping its outlook for full 2020 synergies from 300 million to 500 million, which basically means that's where it's starting to save money from the first data acquisition. Going down the second green box, we got looking a few years down the road to a time when coronavirus is in the rearview mirror. Fiserv should be more than fine. Digital-based finance and payments are on the rise and more important than ever, a slim cash balance puts a dent in its overall strength, but Fiserv more than makes up for it with solid free cash flow margins and ample room to continue expanding. And what is shaping up to be a very volatile year has me pausing for the moment with making a purchase, but this FinTech deserves to be on your radar. So in general, I would say I agree with that sentiment and the fact that Fiserv's, uh, for me anyway, it's a company worth watching. Um, I haven't seen a ton in here that gets me more excited about Fiserv than say Visa or PayPal. But let's take a look at what the bears are saying. So on the bear side, I found a report from Morningstar that came out on June uh, 25th. And they have a little bit more negative view on Fiserv's sort of returns going forward. Again, when I say negative view, it doesn't necessarily mean that Fiserv's stock is going to tank. It just means that growth opportunities might be less uh, than you would find in a comparable stock. So here's the details as they put it, and you see the green boxes, you know, right at the start, you know, their headline for this report is we are skeptical of Pfizer's merger with First Data. We believe narrow moat rated Pfizer will continue to benefit from its embedded relationship with community banks and credit unions and growing payments business. However, we are skeptical of the company's $41 billion merger with First Data. So this is, you know, taking the other view that maybe you pay too much for first data. It could take a long time to really have that investment pay off, which is pretty fair if you're talking about a $41 billion purchase. Uh, I'm not surprised that it's going to take a long time to pay that off. Over to the second green box, we have uh, Morningstar. I like this. They do this bulls and bears. Uh, comparison on the bull side, Fiserv's acquisition of First Data should enable the company to cross sell fraud prevention and security solutions. They will be able to realize significant benefits from cost reduction and increasing profitability at banks may result in additional revenue opportunities. However, on the bear side, Fiserv will be challenged by an aging technology infrastructure that will limit its ability to reduce costs. That to me, without knowing the details of what they're talking about, that would certainly be a concern if you're propping yourself up as a digital payment you know, platform or service offering that's supposed to bring banks into uh, this new world. If you're, if you're basing that on an old infrastructure, then that could be concerning. Secondly, as banks increasingly use technology to differentiate themselves, it may cause customers to review its core processing relationship aka as the digital uh, rollout continues in the traditional banking world they're always going to be looking at their Fiserv, uh, Fiserv uh, service agreement to decide you know is this the best company for us and lastly Fiserv operates 18 different core processing platforms retiring one platform in order to save will force customers to bear the cost of switching, potentially motivating customers to end their partnership with Fiserv. So the key here is uh, very similar to the second point, right? Is you're kind of at the mercy 
of extending your bank contracts with this company uh, in order to keep making money. And every time you lose a customer for whatever reason, uh, from a growth standpoint, you basically have to go out and land two customers in order to keep profits rolling. Now, on the other side of the coin, there's the concept of larger customers, right? You could get one big bank that would be the equivalent of having 15 to 20 uh, community banks on your roster. Uh, but it does look like there's some concerns. Um, this is where you have to get into sort of contract analysis and determine what is the potential for churn rate going forward. Very difficult to do as a retail uh, investor. All right, so what do I think of Fiserv at the end of the day? Um, I think that they're in the right space, right? Digital payments and moving money digitally from one spot to another is a great place to be. They also have some fraud potential to work with banks and some processing potential. So these are all good spots to be in the future. I just am a little concerned about some of the stuff I read on Morningstar that talks about an aging infrastructure. I have no insight into that, uh, but it's something to be cautious about because you can't sell the latest, greatest technology if you don't have the latest, greatest technology. Secondly, it's hard to ignore that $20 billion of debt that's on the balance sheet. Um, again, I don't think this is a bankruptcy situation, but it's gonna take some time to manage through that. And how Fiserv does manage that debt will go a long way uh, towards producing more profits in the long run. On the bright side, I do see that sort of 20 to 25% opportunity for the upside as Fiserv just goes about its business, right? Bank stocks are still getting hit hard from the pandemic concerns, so it could be a good time to get in if you believe in Fiserv, simply because their price is still held down a little bit from the concerns, and if we have another dip, um, you're talking about an opportunity to jump in a company um, that has produced in the past, potentially at a big discount. So bottom line for me, I prefer Visa or PayPal. Um, however, Fiserv is a top 100 NASDAQ company, so I'll gladly take my slice of their game through the QQQ. There's just not enough innovation here that I'm reading uh, to make me excited to go in as a standalone purchase. I personally was also a little surprised they didn't have a dividend, but I guess, you know, they're considering themselves a growth company. Uh, nonetheless, I will take my chances on people that are a little closer to the movement of money in Visa and PayPal. All right, guys, so that's my take on Fiserv. Hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a like and subscribe if you did. We'll see you on the next video.